Hello. For today's tutorial video, we're going to be going over the single action airbrush. Um, for this example, I'm going to be showing you my Pache H, which is a fairly inexpensive airbrush, again, because it is single action. Um, just a refresher, there's dual action, which is what we went over in the last video. This is the dual action Iwata. And what makes it dual action is that you press down on the trigger right here, and then you can pull it back. And what that does is that moves the needle here back and forth so that you can increase or decrease the spray size. So for the single action, the difference being here is that this just gets pressed down. There is no needle on this airbrush. This is a bottom feeder. Um, so this one feeds the paint in through the top in this bowl here and it comes down here and then out the nozzle here. But the way this one works is it's a bottom feeder is that the air flows in here and it creates a vacuum here which sucks up paint through the well and through the nozzle here. And then it atomizes it in front of the air. So instead of having a needle, this one just has this, this it's called a nozzle, uh, right here. And you can tighten it, and I'm gonna show you very carefully here, hopefully you can see it. Um, that you can move this part here, and it's gonna tighten down, and that's gonna create a smaller point, and it's gonna create a larger point. So with the dual action, you're getting that action right here, where you pull this back and forth. Here you're getting it by loosening and tightening this piece right here. Now, like I said, this is also a bottom feeder, so it's an, another difference. Um, and I'm going to demonstrate a couple little techniques that I like with this airbrush and that I use a lot. Um, in particular, I use this airbrush for doing skin tone spatters. Um, if you're familiar with like prosthetics or other things where you'd be necessitating a skin tone, uh, a lot of times you use a chip brush and you flick it. You can also do that with this, and I'll demonstrate how to do that. And then um, I also use it for when I have to apply a sealing coat for something where I need to pump a lot of fluid through the airbrush all at once. And, and I don't want it to get clogged because this one can spray a broader area and it's less likely to get clogged. Okay. Um, just real quick uh, anatomy here. So like I said, we have the nozzle and this thing that tightens it down here. This is what controls the spray. You can get different shapes of the, this piece, this cup here. Um, and then this is where your paint goes, uh, that comes off. Oops. You can also get an extender or larger cups so you can hold more. Um, and again, other companies make airbrushes. I'm just showing you mine. This is a Pache H. Uh, I'm going to hook it up to my compressor and you do need to get specialized hoses. Like I can't use this particular hose on my other airbrush. I have to use it with this airbrush. Um, you can buy adapters though, so that you can switch it back and forth. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna strip, turn on the compressor. All right, we got a good flow there. Now I'm just gonna show you my compressor. Um, I, I think it's the Scorpion is the name of the brand here. But on your compressor, you have a pressure dial here. So right now, this is what I'm talking about right here. So if I do this, and I'm sorry, it's vibrating the whole table here. It's at about one and a quarter, one and a half uh, on the PSI here, right, right there. Okay, so for doing spat, you can see when I, when I do this, it lowers it. There you go. So for what I'm about to do, I wanna lower the pressure. So I'm loosening this up, and you can see it doesn't go quite up as far. I want a little bit higher than that. Cool. And then I'm gonna show you how to do this with some alcohol colors. Uh, for this particular demonstration, I'm going to be using uh, FW inks which are an acrylic that's alcohol-based, so you can clean it. I'm gonna use sepia though, which my sepia is a little bit grosser. Um, okay, 
So this just comes with a dropper. I'm gonna drop it and then I'm gonna thin it with some alcohol. Now, if you were just using standard acrylic paints, you could use it with an airbrush thinner or you could use it uh, with um, uh, uh, water. These ones don't react well with water, so I'm not gonna use it. Now you see that I don't have a cap for this, so you need to be very cognizant of where it is. So, I'm gonna get out some paper here. All right, and I'll show you the difference here. So, it's still fairly high up, but you can see I'm getting a little bit more spatter. So if I have higher pressure, I'm gonna move this down to the ground so it's less noisy. So that's high pressure right there. And you can see I'm getting a fairly even coat. Now I'm going to loosen it up. You can see I'm getting a broad coat. So when I'm doing like a ceiling layer, I do that where I loosen it up and then I get far away from the from the surface. Because if I'm too close, then it's just gonna do that. But I'm getting a lot and I'm getting it at high pressure. So right now I'm lowering the pressure. And you can see when I lower the pressure, and this, this takes some little finesse, you're gonna have to kind of tool around with it. There, you can see I'm getting some splatter. Right there. And you can barely hear it hissing. And you're gonna kinda of have to fiddle with it. I usually need to go a little bit higher. There we go. And again, you can play with the point size. So if you go tighter, it's gonna be smaller splatter. In this case, it doesn't have enough to force it out. So you kinda of gotta play between the, the size of the, um, where the nozzle is to create the size of the splatter and then also the pressure. All right, so start with a new piece of paper here. So you can see like right now it's it's fairly high pressure, but it's it's too tight. So if I loosen it up, and right now I might actually, oh, I'm out of, the reason it's not working is that I'm out of pigment already. <laughs> this one, if you do blast it, it goes pretty fast. And if you know you're gonna be doing a lot, I highly advise mixing up a large thing of pigment to use so that you don't run out or you don't have to remix colors like in the middle of it. So again, I'm just using thin down FW inks. Oh boy, that's not thin. <laughs> and you can see the difference though, is that it's coming out almost straight out of the bottle. Right there. So that's not, uh, not thin down. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just stirring it up so that it gets more alcohol mixed in. Oh boy. There we go. Okay, so that's darker. So that's, again, this pigment is not very thinned down. And I'm, right now, I'm just playing with the pressure on my compressor. I'm keeping the spray size normal, but I'm playing with the pressure on my compressor. And I'm gonna loosen this up a little bit. There we go. So you can see I'm getting a nice spatter right here. And this is darker again, so, you know, it's, it's because it's more concentrated, but you can when you are actually painting flesh tones, you want to thin this out so that it's barely visible. And you're gonna spatter this over your skin tones and what it does is it creates a breakup. Same way a chip brush would. I'm gonna turn off my compressor right now. There we go. So that's a really handy technique. So usually when I'm doing a flesh tone, I do a mixture of browns and reds and I just spatter over a uh, usually a beige-ish or tannish base, depending on the flesh tone that I'm going for. Um, you can even use it to do like fantasy flesh tones. Like if you're doing like a blue, you might want to do it with like a darker blue spatter or even some purple, something like that. So it's just a really handy tool and it made a huge difference in my work when I learned how to do this. 
So again, you're just going to use very thin down colors. Um, you can use it in any kind of paint and you can run it through your, your single action airbrush and it creates a nice base for you. So I highly recommend that technique. You can also, again, if you don't have an airbrush, you can do it with a, um, a chip brush that you've chopped up and I'll quick show you that technique since we're on it. <laughs> so what you do for that is you just get a chip brush and you chop it. And I usually like to chop mine at an angle, but it's kind of up to personal preference here. What doing it at an angle is, is it gives you different amounts for the alcohol or whatever kind of pigment you're using on it to grab onto. So let's take that off there. And I'm just using my thin down uh, FW ink again. And this is how you get a spatter. And the nice thing about doing it with a chip brush is like you can do this angle thing and that gives you little tiny spatters here. Tiny, tiny spatters. And then big spatters when you get over here. So it gives you a nice mixture without having to change like you would on your airbrush back and forth. So that's just a, a little side tip there for painting. Okay. Now what we're gonna do real quick is I'm just gonna show you how to clean up this airbrush and take it apart. Um, again, I've only used the Pache H, so I can't speak to other brands of brushes, but I imagine they're very similar. Um, so if you watched my last video, I showed you this, this thing here, which is a ultrasonic cleaner, which I learned affects the audio. Um, and as you can see, I had mine filled with alcohol. <laughs> All right, so. I, I keep it filled with a bath of alcohol here and um, again you just take it apart so this is just the reservoir that holds the paint um, you unscrew it here with this particular airbrush this isn't even really a counterbalance it's just a plastic piece so like the other airbrush I don't really wash this part And the trigger, I have never actually pulled it out. I don't know if it comes out. <laughs> this one's particular because you do need to use a um, Allen wrench to get that piece off. I'm gonna pause for a second while I go get an Allen wrench. And just like in real life, get, having an Allen wrench handy is something that I'm always gonna misplace, but I did manage to find one pretty quickly. So you're just gonna do that and it just loosens that up. really had it on there. I don't like to usually take this out all the way. The reason being that I don't want to lose it. So I'm just going to screw that in a little bit so that it stays there, but it's loose enough to get this piece out. Okay, so you can see that that loosens up this right here. So now this one, you just got to unscrew it all the way. And then you can get a closer look at how this thing works. Um, so this is where, again, the air comes through here and it comes out the, this part right here. And this is the part that goes through the nozzle here. This is your nozzle. And you can get different cone sizes too. Uh, there's my cone size. You can see that it fits over here. And then you adjust the size by screwing it. And we should be able to see that needle come right out. Or nozzle, I guess. So what you're doing is blowing air through it and it's siphoning up the pigment and then blowing it out. Let's take that out. Uh, and then this piece comes off here. Oop. All right, and then we'll just toss that in for good measure. Cover it up and then run it through a cleaning cycle, which I'm gonna pause because it affects the audio. Alrighty. 
this airbrush I find is much easier to clean than my dual action airbrush because it's got way less parts. Um, you can see it's, it's left some cloudy water there. You don't need the ultrasonic cleaner. You can get this done by just using the little scrubby tools and maybe even a toothbrush. Um, this one, like I said, it doesn't, it doesn't take as much, especially since I'm using, um, alcohol paints right now, because alcohol paints with an alcohol solvent, it gets to clean really fast. So then next you just want to clean out your parts. Uh, reassemble. That's pretty clean. Right. This guy, and right now I am literally just wiping these down. And I don't really use, um, especially on this airbrush, I don't really use, um, whatchamacallit, uh, lubricant, because there's not really any need for it. As you can see, I'm just using my little brushes that I showed you. I, again, these are cheap cleaning brushes. If you Google uh, airbrush cleaning brushes, you should be able to find them. I think that this set in particular costs like $10. It's worth it. You can reuse it. Again, I'm using the alcohol-based paint, so it cleaned up really easily. You can see that all my pieces are coming out really clean. And again, just like the last video, I'm using a paper towel just to sort of put things on. And the reason being that if I drop them, they're less likely to get damaged or bounce around. Um, you want to be careful with, in particular, this part, though, because you don't want to mess up that tip. Okay, so now, assembly time. First thing you want to do is screw back on the, the cup here. Um, the, I don't know what it's called, the nozzle cup, I guess. And this one is particular because you need this cutaway part right here to be on the bottom. So just be conscientious of it. So it's pretty tight right there. Just tighten it a little bit more. Tightened it too much right there. So it's straight on the bottom. You can kind of see it right there. All right. Let's see, next step is this one. I have to think about it. <laughs> All right, so you're just gonna put that in there. It's just gonna sit like, it's gonna hold it like that. Next, you have to thread the, oops. That's the cone, there's the needle. You have to thread that through there. Great. Okay, I'm gonna just screw this on a little bit. And then you wanna make sure that this is, see how it's still got wobble here? You wanna make sure it's pushed all the way forward. And then again, taking your Allen wrench, just tighten down here. It's always good to have a couple spare Allen wrenches around. And then you can just screw on the back end, which I didn't clean. All right, and then last of all, that you just it's just pressure held it's just shoved in there now i'm right-handed um but you can buy these where the cup you can buy a left-handed cup so it would just fit on the other side so that when you're holding it the cup doesn't get in the way of your your hand here but there you have it that's a the pache h a single action airbrush uh, if you have any questions, please uh, ask them on my Patreon, and thank you very much for watching and for your support.